Hi guys, just having a coffee break here with my friend Chet. So I posted a video a couple days ago of me playing with my longer rope, kind of explaining why I play with the long rope and what I choose to use it for. Um, I got a few questions about, well, do you ever rope horses? Um, and I need to make it actually really clear that that tool really isn't um, isn't for roping horses and it's also not the appropriate tool to use to rope cattle. Um, though both skills can be interchangeable when the time suits. So um, I thought I'd share the story of the last case scenario of when I would choose to actually rope a horse. Um, it was when I first moved to South Africa. Um, Gareth and I were training a bunch of Basuto ponies and um, there was a, a huge herd of Basudu ponies and we um, had, we were selecting so many every month that we had to bring in for training. And each, you know, the, the, the pickings were slim as far as training horses for, that would be suitable to take tra horses on, or take guests on trail rides. Um, you know, they had a lot of short ponies and they, you know, they didn't get concentrates or anything. So. Um, you know, the horses are actually all quite small. So I had picked this really pretty gray mare. Um, I ended up naming her Mzenzi. Um, and Zenzi taught me a thing or two and was a great um, demonstration of why I learned to handle a rope. Um, and I was so grateful for all the roping lessons I had back in Colorado. So Zenzi being, you know, nice square stocky little pony would have been ideal for doing trails. Um, I suspect that someone had pulled her out of her wild herd. Now there was a herd of like 200 some on horses that lived out on a mountain um, and the whole herd would come in and the horses that were rideable would go off and do trails. Um, but for the most part, most of these horses were, were well and truly wild. Um, I had suspected that this particular mare, Mzenzi, had been, um, someone had maybe tried to start her for training at one point, um, but she had decided that she wanted no part of humans. Um, her mother was actually, um, her mother's name was Mama Africa, and, um, was known for being a little cantankerous, um, so it wasn't it wasn't too far fetched to believe that Zenzi would be a little cantankerous too. Um, so we brought in the whole herd of horses off the mountain. You're talking like kilometers and kilometers of uh, grazing land. Um, brought the whole herd in. I selected the horses that I want, um, and so I think Zenzi was the first one that I wanted that day. And so we pushed the, you know, kind of separated off a bit of the herd and a bit of the herd and a bit of the herd because these horses were so wild you couldn't approach them. Um, and pushed her into the round pen and I thought, well, I'll, I'll kind of round pin her a little bit, you know, get her to hook on and then, you know, smooth sailing from there. And 14 hours later, I still hadn't had this horse caught. Um, I would go to catch her and things would go really good. Um, and she would just literally tear the round pin apart, crawl through, I think it was a six foot high round pin with like five rungs, um, and she pretty much just made it. And so, it, like, you know, we get her back in and we put the rails back up and, um, you know, it was just, you know, kind of a, it was almost a joke. Um, so after about 14 hours of trying to catch this horse, I thought, well, this isn't working. Um, it's kind of a shame because she was really one of the nicest horses in the, in the herd. Um, and, you know, I thought, well, shit, if, you know, if I let her go this long, 14 hours of evading me, um, no one else is ever going to catch this horse again. Um, I thought it would be, you know, a real waste. And I had already invested a bunch of time into this horse. And um, So the next day we went out and we did the whole thing again. We got her into the round pen. And again, it was just, she had just gotten so clever the day before at dismantling the round pen um, that, you know, it just kept happening over and over again. And we, I was getting nowhere. Um, I tried everything, everything I could think of, um, and that's where my long rope story comes in. So I hadn't roped for quite some time. I think I've roped a, a, a handful of horses here in South Africa, but it's usually the last thing I want to do with a horse. Um, reason being is once you swing and you, you throw your loop at a, at a horse, um, they get so clever at evading it 
you kind of only have one shot. Now this mayor had spent 14 hours evading me and getting really good at evading me and I thought well you know I'm gonna I'm gonna have to send her back and you know it's a shame and you know I was feeling you know pretty frustrated actually at this point and so I had a coffee break um, and I thought well I'm gonna go play you know swing my rope a little bit and see if you know see if I'm still any good because I hadn't played with the rope um, rope anything for years um, and you know I uh, put her in the round pen I started moving her around and I thought well if she's standing still she'll she'll duck it she'll see it so I got her moving um, swinging and it probably took me I probably walked around that round pin god I don't know how many times you know probably a dozen times and the whole time I'm thinking you know like we always play this you know game of what would Jesus do um, and then like when it comes to horsemanship stuff I used to always play this game with myself what would Pat do um, and I needed to go one above Pat that day because um, everything I'd learned from Pat had, um, hadn't gotten me where I needed it to be or it actually had, I'm not sure which. Um, and I thought, well, I need to get this horse caught. And so I started swinging 10 laps or so around and I sent a little prayer up to Horseman's Heaven um, and I... <laughs> I prayed, Ray, please be with me now. And as soon as I threw my loop, um, I had the horse caught. And interestingly enough, everything that I had gone through, the previous 14 hours of trying to catch this horse, had actually paid off because she was backed and ri riding within an hour. Um, so that's a really good story of me roping a horse. Um, but that's probably about the only time I'm actually going to do that to get a horse caught. The rest of it, I'm going to use some hooking on techniques um, and try and win them over um, only because if I'm, I'm teaching you guys and I'm trying to share what I do with you um, you know I don't expect to have you guys learn roping skills in order to be able to get along better with your horse um, that said if you're going to be training horses and you're going to be dealing with a lot of wild horses um, I certainly get quite a few that come through me I think probably in the last decade you know I, Gareth and I have probably handled thousands of wild horses um, you know it's been a really good skill to have and I'm grateful for it and I'm grateful um, that little prayer I sent up to Ray that day certainly paid off for me so there that's where I would use roping um, as a skill for horsemanship um, for the most part I still want to use a little bit of relationship and retreats um, to get these guys one over um, and that's a worst case scenario but I'm glad that I had the skill. Hope you guys enjoy my story.